Former Orlando Pirates and Marisburg United coach Eric Tinkler has raised his hand for the Bafana Bafana job. This follows Safa's decision to sack coach Muleth Nzeki after he failed to leave South Africa to next year's AFCON. Tinkler joins us now via Zoom with his thoughts on Bafana's most recent failures. A very good morning to you, coach. It's becoming really hard to stomach the constant disappointment from Bafana Bafana. And I just want to hear from you. As someone who played at the highest level for the national team, you've got an AFCON medal. What has gone so terribly wrong in the past couple of years? Good morning, Nandi, and obviously good morning to all the viewers. I think there's a lot of things. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, we look at, what is it now, 20, 25 years since we, we won the AFCON, and um, we've, we've literally gone backwards, you know, in terms of our uh, qualifying for, for the AFCON, qualifying for, for World Cups, and you know, we, we like to consider ourselves as a footballing nation and, and a talented footballing nation, but but we, we're not showing that uh, currently. And obviously, we need to be looking at what are those those reasons. There was a symposium that was held back in 2011 in Santon, where all of these things were discussed. And, and by the looks of things, over the past 10 years, we have, we haven't made any progress in the right direction. So so obviously, there, there's there's massive problems. We can't just be looking at uh, the coach. I feel for Malefi and Seki. Uh, as a coach, I know it's very, very difficult because we are the ones who will always take the blame. That that's just the harsh reality of the the, the professional game, and we we accept that. But for Bafana Bafana, we're talking about 19 coaches in the in the past 15 years. You know, so you know, obviously there there there's there's deeper problems that that need to be resolved. I want to stay with the issue of Coach Mulef and Zeki. Um, you made a point saying that, you know, it's not always necessary to keep blaming the coach. We've seen way too many coaches in the Bafana Bafana setup. Do you think then that he should have been given more time? You know, this is the thing where, when it comes mm. to uh, developing a player or developing a squad. It takes, it takes time. But the demands, the current demands that, that is placed on coaches, even at, at PSL level, is, is very, very high. Um, and us as coaches, we, we, we understand that and we acknowledge that. I think things have become even worse due to the fact that there's a lot of betting now that takes place, obviously, in professional sports, uh, in particular football. I think you would have seen how many betting companies, obviously, uh, even sponsor football clubs nowadays. And in the past, us as coaches, when we walk out on the streets, we... Uh, we, we deal with disgruntled fans when the team loses. Now we're dealing with disgruntled fans because not only has their team lost, they've also lost money. Mm. So there's a lot more pressure that has been put on, put on coaches and players alike. And, uh, you know, I was doing an interview yesterday where I was saying, you know, our generation, my generation, I think we were stronger, more mature, better understanding of the, of the game, uh, whereas this current crop, have to be managed in a complete different different manner, and uh, you know, I think that 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 is the massive challenge that us as coaches uh, face at the moment. Yeah. But that's just the harsh reality. When you sign a contract, as Molefi did, he signed a contract, and obviously, the mandate was to to qualify for for the Afcon, and and fortunately, that that hasn't uh, that hasn't happened for 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 many many reasons. Obviously, also. Yes, there's, there's excuses that we can always, or that he mm. potentially could make that he didn't have all his best players because of COVID. But yeah, unfortunately, the world doesn't, is not as simple as that. Yeah, absolutely not. But you've been quoted as saying that, you know, this is not a job you would refuse if you were to be called um, to take up the job. What do you think that you would, you would do differently to try and salvage the situation that we're in? I think right now, to try and salvage something because qualifying for the World World Cup is going to be tough, you know. To qualify for the AFCON, our group, we needed to finish the, either first or second in order to qualify. The World Cup, that's going to be different. And we're in the same group with Ghana again. And uh, I think what we need to gain right now is a lot of confidence. Those players, the squad members need to gain confidence. And in order to gain confidence, they need to be playing games and winning games. Yeah. So I think from now until we start those qualifiers, we need to try and play as many friendly matches that we possibly can, try and reintroduce what we had back in 95, which was the Simba Four Nations tournaments that we used to have prior to us qualifying, obviously, for the, the AFCON. Um, and hopefully, you know, 
good opposition, play the likes of Zambia, play the likes of Zimbabwe, play the teams that, that obviously haven't qualified uh, for the AFCON, uh, to try and build the confidence of the squad. And at the same time, um, prepare ourselves for the, those World Cup qualifiers. I think if we just wait now for the World Cup qualifiers to come, the problem is just going to continue to persist. And, you know, Coach, you mentioned something a little bit earlier. You spoke about, you know, the symposiums that were held, I think, back in 2011. I mean, we could also talk yeah. about Vision 2022. It's been decades now. It's been over a decade of that, and we haven't really seen much of it. So at some point, we also need to discuss SAFA and the role that they're playing in, in the situation that Bafana Bafana find themselves in. Are they doing it enough? Has Vision 2022 failed? Are they even on the right course at all? I think we've seen massive strides when it comes to uh, women's football. Ladies' football has made yeah. massive strides forward and even with with not having the same funding that, that the men's soccer has, they, they've done extremely well and we've seen seen a massive improvement there. I think, yes, we saw also the under-20s qualifying and, and doing quite well. So so you could, you could have a, a point there that they could argue that we've seen development happening in the women's football. We've seen development happening with the under-20s and potentially with the under-17s. But my concern is, is obviously with the younger age groups, the, the youth development programs that were supposed to be implemented within the provinces. You know, those things haven't happened. And uh, I know there was funding that was, that was there because mm -hmm. of us hosting the World Cup. And, and obviously we need to question what, what has happened to all that funding because down at grassroots level, People that I talk to are explaining that it's it's dire situation. Amateur football clubs closing doors because they don't have leagues to play in. And that's, that's extremely sad. Yeah. All right, Coach. I'm going to leave it there for the moment. Thank you so much for your time. That was Coach Eric Tingler just joining us to talk about Bafana Bafana and the vacant coaching position.